off with a pass off to the far side. Brett Varda winds up to shoot and score! What a blast from Brett Varda. Five to nothing, Moorhead. The Moorhead High boys hockey team began the 2004-2005 season in an unfamiliar place, ranked number one preseason for the first time ever. But the Spuds knew all that would give them is a bunch of motivated opponents. It's, it's a big honor, but you know we gotta we gotta keep playing hard and just keep doing everyday things. We can't get, we can't let it get to our head. It's nice that uh, whoever puts up these rankings respects our program, but it doesn't mean a whole lot this early in the year. The opening face-off was against section rival Bemidji. Brian Lee, who came into the season with more fanfare than any spud skater in recent memory, fired home a wrister as if to say he was ready for the spotlight. Derek Hiddle got the call between the pipes and showed that he was ready to do his job just as well. John Ammerman threw a shoulder into the job with a big hit to get the crowd fired up. It was 1-0 after 1. Sophomore winger Jordy Christian got the spuds on the board again with a nifty shorthanded scoring move for a 2-0 lead. Lee added a hat trick and the season was off and running with an 8-0 win. Game number two saw Alexandria visit the Sports Center. Brett Barta fired a blast that found the mark, and that gave Moorhead a 1 0 lead. When defense was called for, everyone pitched in, including sophomore wing Michael Weiss. Midway through the first, Chris Vandevelde got involved with the first of his three goals, and it was 2 0. Bo Christian made it stand with a shutout in net, and the Spuds were 2 0 with an 8 0 win. After an 8-1 win at Rozo, the Spuds were back at home to face Grand Rapids. The Crazy Eights theme continued as the Spuds posted eight goals for the fourth straight game. Jordy Christian opened the scoring two minutes in. Just six minutes later, Sean Lofgren lit the lamp for a 2-0 lead. Dave Morinville's team would outshoot the visitors 46-15, and plenty of those shots went in. Christian found the mark again later in the first for a 3-0 advantage. The Spuds spread the wealth on this night. Ryan Klukey got his name on the board with a power play goal, and the Spuds rolled again 8-1. Next up, a date with 8th-ranked Duluth East. The Greyhounds brought in some talented scores, but Derek Hiddle let the Hounds know they wouldn't run wild on this night. The Spuds opened the scoring as Corey Luce buried the nice setup from Drew Fisher. He would go on to post his second straight hat trick. John Ammerman delivered a solid hit to close out the period, and it was 1-0 after 1. The Greyhounds tied it up in the second, but Moorhead was just getting started. Fisher put the Spuds back on top with a power play goal for a 2-1 lead. Just over a minute later, the Spuds were back on the power play, and Nate Miller was on the attack. It took a while for the guys in stripes to get together, but it was worth the wait for the senior wing. The goal was good, and so was the game, as Moorhead moved to 5-0 with a 7-2 win. Unbeaten White Bear Lake was next to visit the crowded sports center. The game came down to one period and one goal. Matt Becker snapped a two-all tie in the third with his first of the year off traffic, and the Spuds led 3-2. Jay Krause did his best to put one away, but only he ended up in the net. Spencer Dietz made sure nothing got past him, stopping 21 shots in a 3-2 win. The Spuds moved their record to 7-0 when unbeaten Brainerd came to town. This would be the Warriors' first big test of the season, and Dave Morinville sent Bo Christian out to face the Brainerd attack. He was busy but solid, stopping 13 shots. Chris Vandevelde opened the scoring for a 1-0 lead after one, then feathered a beauty of a pass to Corey Johnson early in the second for a 2-0 lead. Vandevelde rifled a shot home that found its way for a 3-0 lead, then lifted one under the crossbar to complete the hat trick, accomplished in the first two periods of play. The fans ditched their lids, and the Spuds ditched the Warriors in a 6-1 win. The Spuds took the XL Energy Center ice against Hill Murray in the Schwanz Cup. Sean Lofgren opened the scoring, slipping one past the pads for a 1-0 lead. The last time they played at the X was the heartbreaking state title game loss to Centennial, but there was no drama in this one. Vandevelde turned and fired for a 2-0 lead late in the first. Then Jordy Christian picked off the Pioneer Pass and skated in for a score. It was 3-1 after one. The second period saw more of the same as Vandevelde 
resumed his scoring charge, going backhand for a 4-1 lead. Then it was Corey Luce's turn, cutting in front and firing it home to make it 5-1. Vandevelde connected later in the second to make it 6-1, rounding out his second hat trick in as many nights. Drew Fisher finished the offensive night, going short side for a 7-1 lead. The unbeaten Spuds were now 8-0 with a 7-4 win. Moorhead was 9-1-1 when the Spuds returned a little closer to home, matching up with Fargo South in the first game of 2005. The Spuds had a resolution to score a little more than they had in the past couple games, and they got it done in a big way. First, Chris Vandevelde centered to Nate Miller for a 1-0 lead. Then Corey Luce tipped in a John Ammerman attempt for a power play goal. It wasn't just a big offensive night, it was a big hitting night thanks to Miller. The Spuds finished the first period scoring as Jake Krause got the blue collar tally, banging away for a 3-0 lead. Derek Hiddle was on his game and got a few nice bounces too, stopping 10 of 11 shots. The Spuds got a little insurance in the second when Sean Lofgren served one up on a platter to Drew Fisher, and it was 4-0. Luce ended up with a hat trick, and the Spuds had a 9-1 win. Moore had got in the face of St. Cloud Tech the next time out in a big section battle. Chris Vandevelde got the spuds on the board early in the first on a power play goal. He'd go on to post his fifth hat trick of the season, and it was 1-0 after one. Brett Barta and Jay Krause teamed up in the second to give Moorhead a 2-0 lead. That's all the spuds would need in a 5-1 win. Moorhead was 10-1-1 when St. Cloud Apollo came to the Sports Center for what figured to be a lopsided and physical game. Brian Lee took care of the physical stuff, and then his teammates jumped in with the rest. Corey Luce got Moorhead started with a nifty goal off the faceoff. Then the Spuds got another on a nifty rush up ice. Here's Matt Becker fading right side, throwing it back. Chris Vandevelde shoots it. Then it was Jake Dibble's turn as he let go with a blast that was tipped in by Drew Fisher for a 3-0 lead. The Spuds made it 4-0 a short time later as John Ammerman set up loose nicely for the one-timer for Luce's second goal of the night. The first period scoring was capped off by a blast from Brett Barta's stick, and Moorhead went to the locker room with a 5-0 lead. The second period saw more of the same as Luce finished off a hat trick with a rebound goal. The hats were flying, and so were the spuds as they cruised to a 13-0 win. It was a full house as Class A Power War Road visited Moorhead. The teams had a combined record of 27-1-2. The first two periods were scoreless, but Corey Johnson flew up the boards and beat the netminder for a 1-0 lead. The Spuds appeared to hold on for the win, but officials called offsetting penalties and put the clock back to six seconds. Just enough time for Kyle Hardwick to beat the buzzer and send it to overtime. The Spuds had chances but couldn't find the mark, and the Warriors escaped with a controversial one all time. It was definitely a scramble as the Spuds put their 15-1 and 2 mark up against East Grand Forks. The Green Wave put up a fight. Corey Luce put Moorhead up 1-0 with a power play goal, then Drew Fisher broke a one-all tie as he followed up on a flurry for a 2-1 lead. The big hit of the night was leveled by Ryan Klukey, and the Spuds had plenty of offense to go with it. John Ammerman picked the corner on the power play, and Moorhead led 3-2 after one. The Spuds went on to an 8-4 win, and Dave Morinville's team had win number 16. Moorhead fans had waited all season long to see their team host defending state champ Centennial, and the Spud skaters made the wait worthwhile. Big hits and big efforts were the storyline of this one. Centennial scored first and took a 1-0 lead into the second period, but Corey Luce whacked in a Corey Johnson centering pass to tie it at one in the second. Ryan Klukey then gave Moorhead a lead, sneaking one in on the power play for a 2-1 advantage. The Cougars even matters at two apiece, and the intensity was at state tournament level to be sure. A total of 62 penalty minutes were levied between the two teams, but then Moorhead used the emotion to change the scoreboard. The Spuds scored three unanswered to break it open in the third. Vandevelde got the first and third, and Luce got the second. The top-ranked team in the state bested the number three with a 5-3 win.
Next up, a section battle with Rozo, the team most figured would be Moorhead's nearest section competitor. Nate Miller got Moorhead started with the power play goal right off the faceoff, and it was one to nothing. Corey Johnson got into the intimidation business a short time later. Emboldened by his new role as team enforcer, he led a scoring rush that was finalized when Brian Lee cleaned up in front for a two nothing lead. Spencer Deitz took care of his end of things as well, stopping 15 shots for the shutout win. Jake Krause put on a show in the second period, weaving through the D and firing a shot that Jordy Christian turned into a goal, and the Spuds had another win in the bag, improving to 18-1-2 with a 7-0 win. All the fashionable couples were on hand when third-ranked Bloomington Jefferson matched up with the Spuds. The visitors grabbed a quick 1-0 lead before Jake Dibble tied it up, banging in a backhander that got the crowd on its feet. Spencer Deitz kept things under control in his end, and then in the second, Ryan Kluke gave Moorhead its first lead of the game. Nate Miller came up with the extra effort goal, and Moorhead then had a 3-1 lead. Drew Fisher handed out a big hit, and the Spuds handed Jefferson its fourth loss of the year, 3-1. The Spuds lined up for the section playoffs with Monticello, a team they'd beaten badly the year before, and this one, too, was over early. Just 24 seconds in, Brian Lee put Moorhead on the board, converting a centering pass from Matt Becker. Then Drew Fisher converted on the solo rush, and it was 2 to nothing. Jordy Christian made it three zip on the backhander and the route was on. When Matt Becker scored, it was 7-0 after one, and Moorhead was en route to a 15-0 win. There were lots of heroes on this night. The section semifinal had Moorhead hosting Alexandria. The Spuds had won 52 straight home games, but the Cardinals hung tough. Chris Vandevelde scored just 28 seconds in, but the Cards got one back to tie it at one. The senior forward lit the lamp again to give Moorhead a 2-1 lead, and then Jay Krause buried one off the nice Nate Miller pass. A 3-1 lead became a 5-1 final, and the Spuds were off to the section championship. The Spuds had walloped Rozo twice by a combined score of 15 to 1, but the third meeting had a very different flavor. The Rams caught Moorhead on their heels, scoring twice in the first three minutes. The Spuds got on the board in the final 90 seconds of the frame on a Ryan Kluke rebound, and it was 2 to 1 after 1. Corey Johnson, with the help of one of the Rams, tied it at 2 six minutes into the second, and the tide had officially turned. Derek Hittle took his game up a notch with one of his 19 saves before Chris Vandevelde put one puck and one defender in the net for a 3-2 lead. The lead became 4-2 when Sean Lofgren got past the defense and scored, and then John Ammerman took his turn at providing the heroics. The Spuds overcame a shaky start and went on to post a 6-3 win. It was Moorhead's fifth straight section title, a new school record, and the 23rd win of the season. But all eyes were looking forward. They just came out strong, and uh, you know we knew if we kept plugging away, we'd uh, get some goals and uh, start falling for us, and uh, we shut them down after that. How special is it to go back to state for the fifth year in a row as a school record? It's never happened before. Uh, it's, you know, it's an honor, you know, uh, especially since last year, you know, we kind of want some revenge on all the teams and, uh, you know, hopefully we can come out with a state championship this year. How rewarding is it to go back to state again? It feels great. Three straight years. Uh, it's a dream come true. Hopefully we get a little better outcome this year. It's a great week, you know, win or lose. Of course we want to win, but it's a great week either way. You know, uh, the state's crazy about hockey and it gives you goosebumps even warming up so it's, it's a lot of fun. 
The Spuds opened the state tournament against first-time entry Rochester Century. The Panthers had 23 wins of their own, but Brian Lee sent a message just 52 seconds in. It was a great move to shield the defender and then play it on net. Moorhead's defense and goaltending was stellar as Spencer Dite stopped all 14 shots he saw. Century netminder Alex Kangas brought his A game as well, but he was no match for Matt Becker's second period snipe, which made it 2 to nothing. The Spuds finished a workmanlike effort as Corey Johnson closed out the scoring, and Moorhead was on to round two with an impressive 3 nothing win. I thought it was a pretty good game in the first period. Um, they were wearing us down, and we were wearing on them a little bit, I think. And then in the second period, uh, coach came in here and told us to just go out there and play a game. And our four check really got to him. We bottled him up a little bit and wore him down. We came out a little soft and uh, not like we wanted to. We wanted to really fly around the D and stuff. But uh, we came out and we played defense first a little bit more. And I mean, we kept shooting on that, but their goalie played real well today. The, the first goal is huge. I mean, especially when we get it that early. I mean, we didn't really know anything about Century. We didn't know how they were. We knew they had a decent goalie. And so we got the early, you know, or it, you know, this is pretty good, you know. And then we didn't get another one until late in the second. So, I mean, it's pretty big. It's a big side, but their goalie, he played extremely well. well. Let's make sure we're charged up emotionally. We've got a lot of passion. We deserve to be here. Let's show that we're going to go out and get it. All right, boys? Let's go. Let's go. The semifinal opponent was a Duluth East team that Moorhead had beaten 7-2 early in the season. No one expected that it would be that easy again. It was scoreless in the second period when Ryan Klukey found the mark as a Spud power play expired and Moorhead finally had its first goal. The Spuds would strike again in the final minute of the period as Chris Vandevelde scored for a 2-0 lead. And held in by the Spuds, shot, save, rebound, backhand, they score! And who, Vandevelde! Who got it? <laughs> Eventually it has to happen. How long can you keep this guy off the scoreboard? He gets a rebound. It was 2-1 in the third when Drew Fisher found a loose puck in front and whacked it home for a two-goal advantage. Just three and a half minutes later, Moorhead struck again. This time, Corey Luce found himself at the right place at the right time. 4-1 was the final as Moorhead found its scoring touch late to advance to the state championship game. We just went really hard in the net and uh we're getting shots, rebounds, uh, we just couldn't capitalize, but, uh, you know, we just kept uh, wearing them down, and uh, they eventually fell for us. This was Moorhead's 10th trip to state, and never before had the Spuds won it all, but they had that chance against Holy Angels. The Stars came out flying. The shot never got through out to center. Hawkins. With a step, Hawk is moving in with a backhand. Penalty coming up, scores! <laughs> he counted it, he just points it for the Spuds. The center for Ammerman turned away. Here's Hurley again. Hurley with Barabal, center shot, score! The number one goal scorer, Vandevelde. It looked like it might get worse with the Stars on the power play, but Chris Vandevelde and Matt Becker teamed up for a shorthanded tally that brought the Spuds within one as they headed to the locker room. Not only were the Stars playing well, they were getting some huge breaks. Oh my, dumped in by Hurley. How did that happen? Well, I think it hit that they're going to see him shoot the puck. Right there, and watch the puck drop down. They've been in the other Everyone in black was shaking their heads, but it would get worse before it got better. Holy Angel star Jay Barabal broke in on a line change and made it 4-1. to one. The Spuds could have unraveled. Instead, they dug in and started a rally. Moorhead's not using the points as much as they did before. There's a shot in the goal by Vandevelde. Oh, he picked the corner cleanly on that one. It was 4-2 after two, and now the Spuds knew they'd need some great plays and a bounce or two. Midway through the period, they got the start they needed as Corey Johnson lit the lamp. At first glance, it appeared to be all effort, but replay showed there was some nifty stick work as well. With six and a half minutes to play, the Stars got what turned out to be the backbreaker as they broke out two-on-one and scored their fifth goal. Moorhead was down two, but appeared to cut it to one as Corey Johnson batted a puck out of the air, but it was waved off, ruled a high stick. Replays showed that the contact was made below the crossbar, but the call stood and the goal did not. The impact of that decision was realized with just over a minute to go as Dave Morinville pulled his goaltender and the Spuds got a goal that would not be waved off. 
The game could have been tied up. As it was, Moorhead needed to press without a netminder for the final minute. And just before the horn sounded, the Stars scored again. The final score was 6-4. to four. No words were necessary. The pictures said it all. It wasn't supposed to end this way. Not this year. Not with this team. But we were all reminded that hockey is a funny game. The best team doesn't always win. And one good bounce can be worth more than a dozen hard-working shifts. Still, no one at the XL Energy Center came away believing one team was better than the other. One team just had more goals. Spud fans greeted their heroes the following day at Moorhead High. There was a consolation prize of sorts, as Brian Lee was named Moorhead's first ever Mr. Hockey. And there was a trophy to remind everyone of the great season that had been, and no one was about to forget it. Sometimes it falls in a one-game deal. That's what happens. We play them again. I got a feeling we get them. Things just weren't going our way. You know, there were bounces that could have went our way that just didn't. And it's something that you can't, you can't change. You know, you look back on it and it's disappointing, of course it is, because, you know, we've worked so hard to get there, but, you know, is it going to matter? Not really. You know, it was still a great year. You know, it's still an unbelievable group of guys I've been with all year, and it was a lot of fun no matter what. Spuds fans would certainly have loved to celebrate a title, but they wouldn't have been any more proud of their team than they already were. The coaches wouldn't have been any smarter, and a championship celebration certainly wouldn't have proven anything about this team. All who saw the Spuds in 2004-2005 knew it was one of the best teams to come along in years, and along the way the Spuds gave their fans, friends, and families hundreds of memories that can never be replaced. And if this postseason proved anything, it's that once you get to state, anything can happen. Critics will say next year can't be as good, but those words have been spoken many times in recent years. So now the underclassmen will dream of a new season and a new chance to finally bring that first title home. And 15 seniors will have shown them the way to go from good to great. Congratulations, Spuds, on a great 2004-2005 season.